Hi, this is Shannon MacArthur from Gaia's Zoom Room. Welcome. Welcome, Joan. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Shannon. I love being here. Uh, yes, here I am at the, uh, the Thompson River. Well, virtually. Uh -huh. Um, and in the home of Joan Har uh, Hardy. Um, With yeah. the leaves and the trees behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And tonight in Gaia's Zoom room, we're going to talk about a few things, as we usually mm -hmm. do. Uh, one of them is the uh, Humanity Rising uh, session of today. And I was just, I was so thrilled with it because it was about the emergence of the sage's archetype um, and transforming the world. And that's so much like what, and you know, I've got to mention othernetworks.org because Stan who created other networks and has created the, uh, the Zoom room for the after chat so that the, the, the presenters from Humanity Rising can, uh, can actually talk to the people that they've been talking to face-to-face uh, -face and chat and uh, you know, talk about more than what they talked about on Humanity, Humanity Rising main stage. So it was an amazing um, presentation today. Uh, we had... Um, Let's see if I've got the people listed here. Oh, they didn't give us the people. Sorry about that. But it was uh, day 220 of humanity. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and wow. and then the, the presentation today talked a lot about uh, how important uh, wisdom is in this world that's going on and uh, how it is not just the old people and just because you're old doesn't make you wise and, <laughs> and the youngsters that are coming in already wise uh, but not in experience and so how do they put this innate wisdom to work in our world and yeah. The, the, the chats that were going on were really quite interesting. Uh, Carolyn uh, was uh, joined us in the after chat again. And, you know, what an amazing young woman she is. You know, uh, when it was, she, she spent most of the time um, with her camera off. And at one point she turned her camera on and we found out why she was, had her camera off is because she's going walking with her dogs. And so it, I appreciated her turning her camera off for that. But what an amazing young woman, you know, um, and now I keep saying young woman, that's because she's the age that I think that I should be and I'm not. And I, <laughs> It's the age you feel. It is the, well, That's the no, the age I think, not that I feel my feet. Well, not. when I say feel, I don't mean physical feel. Mm, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't feel 71 years old. Yeah. There's nothing about my inner life that is, says 71, no. Oh. I, I feel at various times, I feel a lot of times, maybe in my 20s, 30s, sometimes in my preteens, <laughs> you know, it depends. You're just a child, just a child at heart. Well, playing is part of what makes my life happy and good and healthy, I think. I absolutely agree. And it's one of the things that I love best about you. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, so, but I do feel that um, the the word feel doesn't mean physical. It means uh, mental feelings, um, emotional feelings, that kind of thing. And I do not feel like an elder. I don't act like an elder either most of the time. <laughs> I. Uh... 
I usually feel about 40. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sometimes 35. Hey. Yeah. But never so young as um, 17 or 20. Um, I keep getting grounded by my, my feet. Um, they're not happy feet these days. Uh, mine aren't either. Mostly in the morning. Uh, once I've been on them and walking, they get a little bit more happy. Yeah. Um, but the moment that I step out of bed and, and you know put my slippers on, oh my gosh, it's painful. But then that's the whole body thing too. I mean, my hands are. They feel very stiff and like the other well, day. I'm really just... glad that you've got the right mental attitude because but that's the, it. The, yeah. Um, and, and, and when I go online, the, the body kinds of kind of falls away. So I just me. Well, see, and that's it. So you're online feeling 40, sometimes in your late thirties. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. I remember very distinctly having a conversation with my father when he was in his 90s and asking him, how old do you feel? He felt like he was in his 40s or 50s. Yeah. Because in his mind, that's where he lived. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the brain doesn't age the same way at all. No. No, 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 no. Oh, well. It does, but but you just sort of push that other part of the brain away. <laughs> go away. Go away. Yeah. Don't want to deal with you. You're no fun. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the sages are actually uh, an important part of the Our Heart Gardens idea. Because oh, yeah. we need that kind of wisdom in our communities. You know, and, and in the Humanity Rising conversation in the chat, um, there was, um, I guess I might have said something about the pattern is emerging. And uh, it was Carolyn who, who um, picked up on that and it's, what pattern? And, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's the Our Heart Gardens idea, the pattern that is emerging. Yeah. Uh, is um, to help us um, survive what's coming and what is going on right now. And it's communities in the hearts of, of communities where, where we help each other and feed each other and grow good food and all that good stuff. So when you speak of sages in our time, right? who do you see? Oh, the, off the cuff, Bruce Lipton, um, Greg Braden, um, Stan Pokras, uh, Leo, um, and um, it just, you know, David Stoney, um, Humanity Rising has a lot of them. Jim Garrison, absolutely. Um, and Peter Mary. And he's way too young to be a sage, except that he's not, because it's not age related. Right. And Peter is absolutely qualifies as the archetype in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and here I've been talking about the men. And in my mind, sages are men. And that's because that's, that's stereotype. How grew up yeah and when I, you think of sages of then the first thing i thought of when you said the word sage was the hermit in the guy in tarot yeah. now that's a male thank you yeah but there then i thought to myself but then wouldn't the elder of fire be a sage of course of course she would. And she yeah. burns sage. <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, women who have 
the the amazing ideas um and they share them and they go out and they do the work yeah yeah well the after chat has a large number of women sages um and I love that Stan created a place where we feel yeah. comfortable together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a true joy to get into the pool with everybody. Yeah. 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 So um, we, we talked about the, uh, the upcoming, the, 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 uh, the pattern becoming visible. And uh, from my way of thinking, it is the, um, the gardens and it's getting back to the gardens uh, that uh, will help us. And, and, and they have to be, you know, small, many, many of them and small ones so that, you know, um, you don't get too many people so that people don't get forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, Plus, I mean, communities, you know, depending on, on where an our heart garden is, what community is in, and whether it's a repurposed building or one that's being built, it all depends on those kinds of things. Yeah. But um, that's the whole point of our heart gardens is to eventually push it out so that it's a global. Well, I actually think that it is um, part of the movement of movements that Paul Hawkins came up with, mm -hmm. uh, a way of um, seeing the, yeah. the actual movement is by giving it a name that all can say yes. I am a part of that. Mm -hmm. And once you have a look at the, the number of them and how OGs oh, am I, uh, and, and <laughs> to see the, the buy-in of, and, and to see the actual movement that names it to be what it is. And, and these gardens have all been growing, but they don't identify with anything so far they're just identifying with uh their small community and feeding the people that they're involved with they don't see themselves as the part of the larger movement and that's the movement that i want to name so that we can all see ourselves as a part of that movement that movement is the one that we are finding its feet so how does part. a movement start from the point of view of after talking, literally moving, that's the end result is to have the gardens? Well, yes, the, uh, no, and no, um, that is a step that needs to be taken before we take the real step. Um, and, and we need to, I mean, almost, I think, needs to be done almost simultaneously. As we find our feet, we reach out and help our mother. You know, um, she needs us to pay attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, to, to help our mother get up from the state that we have put her in. Uh, mm -hmm. is basically what I imagine us doing once we find our heart, you know, um, and, and pull ourselves together. We reach down and, and help our mother rise uh, and rejuvenate her. You know, they talk mm -hmm. about regeneration and I don't know. I, I think we need to rejuvenate her. And, and, make when, her a maiden again <laughs> yeah like the priestess and the guy in tarot who has the one-sided 
old and, and young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a perfect yeah. uh, way to look at it. I would love to think that I could actually embody that. So um, uh, wise on the inside and youthful on the outside, perhaps. I would love to be able to embody the six of fire uh, and dance around the sacred oh, fire. Oh my gosh, yeah. That was, to me, when the Red Tent Temples yeah. were a big thing, yeah. The Six of Fire was so, for me, the Red Pen Temple. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I saw that. And see, something like the Red Pen Temple is really just, the way it was shown was just like, you know, a, a, a time when women got together. But, but each Our Heart Gardens needs to have a moon lodge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the major parts, I think, of our heart gardens is to allow the women to be with women again. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been off being servants for our husbands and children mm -hmm. and for the people that we sell our time to. And, and so we have to give our children to, we have to pay somebody to take care of our children. You know, that, that whole nuclear family stuff just was such timely. It needed to be experienced so that we could be here now looking at that and saying that was a failed experiment. That was not good for us. We've learned our lesson. We're going to do something different now. We're going back to the communities that support us. And, you know, the question, it, can villages support themselves? Well, the answer has always been yes. If they couldn't support themselves, they would have to disperse and go and find other villages who are successful. And they were successful. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Well, throughout history, they have supported themselves. That's right. It only became necessary for the monoculture, you know, uh, agricultural machine to come into mm -hmm. play when the wars happened. Yeah. Because yeah. we had to feed the soldiers. And that's why the victory gardens became important. And yeah. so we sent all this food across the ocean. And, and that was the only way at the time to provide for our troops. And well, we're not doing that anymore. We don't need to continue with a method of agriculture that is so extractive that leaves deserts behind. Mm. You know, we can start taking care of ourselves again in a good yeah. way yeah that's the and we've got all these buildings that we're not going to be using because we're not going to be gathering en masse anymore so what do we do with our arenas and our memorial buildings and you know our... you to make use of them in the way you come up with there you go our heart gardens in mm -hmm. our gardens where we grow happy together yeah yeah i want that i want that so much and so we're going to be uh starting the urban uh farm the butler urban heart farm and that's going to be happening kevin sent me an email saying uh that he was looking forward to uh working with me again I okay that. yeah and so uh, that will be starting and, and that will interrupt humanity rising in the after chat uh, because I work in the mornings uh, yeah. when I'm working in the garden. That's where I work. So I can imagine me taking my phone with me and, and uh, having it all in my pocket. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, and, and truly, you know, uh, I have 
life goes on, you know, and you, you turn the page, you do something different. And uh, so I'm looking forward to finding out uh, what is coming up next. And what is really ni nice is the nonviolent communications was mm -hmm. on last night again. And yeah, I know you said the NVC and I thought, what? What's that? that? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, nonviolent communication, yeah. Yeah, and it was good. Um, uh, it was just, um, just three gentlemen this time instead of four, mm -hmm. uh, but that that one uh, day of having four of them with me and allowed that statement to come up. And then that reading that had me with the four uh, cards that had yeah. men in it. Oh my yeah. God, what a beautiful reading that was. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, um, it's fun and games. Uh, it sure does add a lot to the experience of life when you act as if there really is something going on and mom really does uh, play in your life and, mm -hmm. and in my life she does. And, and it's important to have uh, something that, that makes you smile and, and you have it with Alex. Yeah, well, I don't. Yeah. I don't have an Alex with uh, a history of playfulness. Um, I, I have Joanne, and she's wonderful, and and we we do have fun. But you know uh, that long term uh, experience of sharing games. And we, we just happen to be fortunate enough to have found somebody who. The most important part is we accept each other for who we are oh. completely. That's important because sometimes um, we're dif we have differences. We have different interests that aren't always, you know, co-communicating and stuff. But we have our our times throughout the day when we are together and we are playing and, and they can pop up at any time. It, I, it was, it's been a magical, wonderful life together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I remember when I was in my long-term relationship that we had uh, some very special, you know, plays on words. We had stories. Mm -hmm. We were both storytellers and appreciators of the patterns that we saw and, and the wonderful um, stories that we built together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just got a message from Stan. Who, oh. Well, he, I declined a phone message from him, or a phone call from him. And well, because I'm in Gaia's Zoom room and we're talking. And so I just sent him a message to tell him that we're here and that he could come if he wanted to. Sure. Yeah. So I wanted to let you know just in case he did come. Oh, so that's he's, cool. He's expected. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's another one of these sages that we were talking about. You mentioned him actually earlier. I did, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, it, the conversation today in the after chat was really good. Uh, important. Had, yeah. Um, more people than we've had for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so it's like it, it felt more robust again. And we had, you know, three of the presenters show up. And so we got to delve more deeply. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was really quite lovely. That's good. Yeah. Important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Um, wanted to Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Glenn's uh, nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. 
that was interesting. Um, there he is. The um, talking about us versus them and the 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 dualistic um, way of the world these days and how to go past that. Um, he says that Naomi Klein, he uses a, a quote from Naomi Klein, the interplay between lofty dreams and earthly victories has always been at the heart of moments of deep transformation. The breakthroughs won for workers and their families after the Civil War and during the Great Depression, as well as for civil rights and the environment in the 60s and early 70s, were not just responses to crises. They were responses to crises that unfolded in times when people dared to dream big, out loud, in public, explosions of utopian imagination. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I do feel that our heart gardens is one of those, you know, and if I, if I had held on to that concept that that was all it was, I would never have given my, my, my life to writing the website mm -hmm. back in 2015. Yeah. Uh, and this, this whole um, progression of things would not have happened. So it's, it's the, and, and you believe it right down to the, the, the marrow of your bones. You know when something is in integrity and works. And I'm looking forward to being able to um, speak with others about this pattern and how we um, learn to see the pattern and see our part in the pattern. Uh, it's really what I believe people really need is to feel that they are a part of the pattern. And it matters what people think and what you think and, and what you do and what you choose. It's really yeah. important. I think that everybody would feel that way in themselves is very important. It's a matter of them understanding that there are other people who feel that way. And, and that's what's nice about the different places like uh, Humanity Rising and groups and, and the uh, NBC <laughs> gathering and talking. Well, the gathering and the talking is really important because no one of us is going to come up with the vision that supports us all. Oh, yeah. If, if that were so, it would be like God. And, and no one of us is going to bow down anymore. You know, uh, we are God. Um, or goddess, and, either way. Yeah, or goddess. But I, let's not be gender specific. Um, one, when, yeah. when I use yeah. the word God, I am not being gender specific. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it is a word that people associate with patriarchy. That's it is, the, you're the right. Thing. Yeah. Um, and, when, and, and there are people who have a problem with everything okay. being just, you know, the whole idea of women, W-O-M-E, and which is why my address is a wolf femme because it's about the feminine as well. That's my girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, uh, and, and so I, I understand why the importance is on 
uh, not referring to coming, wor coming up with not, words that it's understanding that it's not um, I that I don't mean it gender specific right. doesn't make it not gender specific in somebody else's mind. Well, hearing and, it as such, I mean that's just it. When you begin to to talk more and more with more and more people, each person is going to hear it from their baggage, from their personal place that they've arose from and so everybody's going to sometimes come up with a different sense of what you're saying or well, anyone else is saying that's actually why i started using the word spirit yeah because it's not gender specific right um the problem with using spirit is that people pigeonhole you uh as as being woo woo what is woo woo? What is woo woo? Woo woo is um, 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 new age, and um, oh, so in other words, they want to stay in the old world and have. They'd probably be more comfortable with the word God, and and so some really, people would. Yeah, and so so perhaps I would. I think spirit is a much I better way to look at it just fine and, because and it represents the entire it is the way i look at spirit is what enlivens all as in gaia as well mm -hmm. and the sun is all a form uh, a, a manifestation a formation of spirit right so it's all spirit and spirit has not a human um, personality and whatnot. It's it's not a human being. Right. right it's like exactly. a skin cell is yeah. not a human being. Right. Um, and, and it's energy is what it is. It is energy because we're all energy, but we happen to be in physical bodies, and it that is, causes problems. It is the brain. Mm -hmm. that allows the transmission to be shared yeah yeah i yeah. always look at it the, the and i know that you use the term and to me all that is speaks so well of the entire entity of energy that we've come from I want to take it one step further. Mm -hmm. Is all that is all that God is? It depends on how a person looks at it. <laughs> I don't think it is. I, For I, you, it isn't. That no. see, this is the problem that people get into. If we want to sort of get a little bit further away from the um, I, can't, I can't think of the word so much um, but pigeonholing in a sense I, which does, it doesn't even make sense to me pigeonholing but anyway <laughs> but, but, but yeah I know what it means but it's kind of like um People identify because language has created us to hear things in certain ways. What I like is the idea of having something that terms it as everything, not as a specific thing. That comes from a past that is completely buried in what that past represented. We're in a new time. So when we speak of something that represents the entire universe, it needs a word that speaks of not something from 
the old world, but speaks of something of the entire essence. Essence. I like the word essence. I like the word essence too. Yeah. The uh, the philosophy that holds that uh, Mama Gaia, our great mother earth, um, is not um, going to be ruined by humanity. Um, I, I appreciate that and that she is eternal and all that. And eternal is a word that humans came up with for a concept mm -hmm. that we really can't wrap our heads around and that's okay um <laughs> pardon me the thing that comes to my mind is that a woman is not defined by her uterus and i wonder if the earth is not the uterus of the goddess gaia so she could be actually much, much larger than a planet. I like that idea. Uh, a woman can be a full human being without a uterus. Well, sure. I mean, there's a lot of women whose uteruses were removed, but they're still women. Absolutely. It doesn't take that away. Yeah. Um, which is the unfortunate thing is that a lot of people define themselves by what they have, you know, from the point of view of, well, if, if you can't produce children, then you're not a real woman. Or even if you can't produce from a male point of view, then you're not a real man if you can't. Yeah. And that's not true. No, it's not. Not at all. I, I went through a lot of um, self um, investigation mm -hmm. uh, when I gave my son up. Mm. Um, you know, I I I was twenty two, mm -hmm. and you know that that's when you should uh, be able to um, support a child. And though I was a, a single person at the time, um, I really wasn't I still felt that there was going to be an opportunity to have one of my own. And so another I, yeah. I, I felt no um, uh, lessening of my ability. Actually, I was uh, thrilled that I actually could have a child. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever happened, um, at, at least I, I knew that, you know, I had fulfilled my duties as a woman. <laughs> Uh, and, and it did go through my head, you know, sure. uh, I, I, I'm a human being and it's mm -hmm. important that this, it was important to me that this human mm -hmm. being, this, this, um, the wetware that I was given was actually put to good purpose, uh, yeah. just from a body, um, and, a um, a human animal, uh, point of view. Uh, I did my part, um, but the idea of having my child inherit <laughs> all of the the uh, the traumas um, and um, and me, yeah. I I wanted him to have better, and so it was adoption that I chose. Um, and apparently a very good one. Well, yeah, I saw. I mean, the, the people who brought him up oh, were good people. I saw my granddaughter on <gasps> Sunday. Ooh. Sunday. Yeah, Ooh. it was wonderful. She 
has she's no longer a baby no i'm she's i'm sure she's now. not yeah she's she's now two uh and <gasps> oh yeah um i couldn't be happier uh that uh for my decision because my son is a well-adjusted lovely young man and he has married a beautiful young woman and they have an adorable child <laughs> and i'm really looking forward to getting to know her as time mm. goes on and this covid goes away so i can go and hug my granddaughter well this is where we gotta get vaccinated yeah yeah and if i want to travel again i gotta do that so yeah yeah, yeah. so um i'm changing my mind and there i was so adamant um uh, about this and oh well i guess things things happen and 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 trans you know it's like the number 10 card transitions, transitions. Mm -hmm. yeah and i know that uh vaccinations have saved humanity basically in in um yes could you get one could yeah. you bring it to me Sorry. It's so nice to have um, somebody that you can pill. say that to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 o'clock, so I have to take. Uh, oh, a little bit later than that. It's later than that? Yeah, 25 minutes after oh, 10, 10 yeah. for you. But I mean, it's in, the, it's in, the, it's in the realm of 10. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember when Lisa and I were doing um, a newspaper delivery in the mornings on weekends the uh instead of it being by six o'clock in the morning it was by eight o'clock in the morning all right <laughs> and we stretched it as long as it had an eight in it it was good enough <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> and if we if people complained about it then we would put them at the top of the list and we'd go and deliver the one or two newspapers that they really wanted <laughs> at that time of the morning <laughs> Got to keep the customers happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were newspaper fairies. And um, sometimes we left our wings at home and we were just paper trolls. <laughs> paper trolls. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had the dance, you know. You do those two and, and, and you know, and, the, and then that one, that one, and missed that one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but she kept uh, track of it throughout the week, and, and we That's would do good. it together on the weekends. So I was working oh. basically seven days a week, but so was she, so it was all good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. We had I'm, fun a lot. I met my best friend when I was a young girl, um, small, a little girl. Um, because her mother used to deliver papers to us and she would come with her mommy oh, yeah. and we got to be best friends. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, some of the best people you meet in places you wouldn't expect. Yeah. As absolutely. a matter of fact, that's a lovely opening for somebody that I would like to bring in to your attention. Mm -hmm. Her name is Bonnie. And yesterday I met her on the beach. Ooh. I had gone to sit uh, and, and, you know, spend some time with Gaia. Mm -hmm. And um, it reminded me of the elder of water, oh. you know, the man in the rowboat. Yeah, yeah. And in that, um, in reverse, it, mm -hmm. um, or, or it had to do with, um, you know, people like to listen or that people like to talk to you. And so I, I remembered that as I was sitting there and she was telling me her life story. And, um, and so I, I was um, able to bring patience into it instead of, you know, going through all sorts of changes. It was like, mm -hmm. I realized that this woman hasn't had anybody to talk to for a very, very long time. And so I just let her run on like a babbling brook. And it was lovely to listen to her. She opened herself wide up. 
And it was lovely to hear the fullness of her story. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many uh, experiences that she just pulled in resonated with me. You know, uh, yeah. her history and mine, you know, they, they have similarities, a lot of similarities. Yeah. And so the compassion thing was, uh, it was ignited. And, um, and well, I, I, I was kind of feeling sorry for her anyway, because she has a dog, a uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback. Um, um, no looks like a, a, a bull it, it sounds like, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like it's a lizard. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no, no the way you said Ridgeback? Ridgeback. <laughs> <laughs> Along the ridge of the backbone, the hair grows the opposite way. Oh, really? Instead of going down the spine, it goes How up the spine. Interesting. Like it's got hair standing up? Yeah. Um, it, there's a ridge. <laughs> um, wow. and, so, and these are um, fairly large dogs, usually. Mm. And this one is is a is a uh, female dog and and not uh, really large, but the dog has a very large tumor on it, her back leg, and she's basically on her last legs, and so Bonnie takes her down to oh. the the river and they spend time, uh, you know, walking, and and being together. And mm -hmm. so this is. Um, basically the time that uh, is for her and the dog. She is giving all of her uh, time and love. Oh. Uh, they, they've been together for 11 years. Wow. Uh, so yeah, wow. Uh, so it's, um, it's a hard time for her. And so I was really glad to be able to listen and just be there for her. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, um, I got an opportunity to share my stories about Dorian, the bunny, mm. Dorian B for bunny gray. And uh, she talked to me as I was sitting there and, and I don't know if she, she knew uh, my, my chosen style of dress, but she's talking to me about well, she used to re uh, read Joan Collins books, and then she got into a book that was given to her that is um, about Victorian times. And, uh, and as time went on, then, of course, it was time to go home. And so mm -hmm. we get up, and there I am in my long Victorian skirt and my cape as I, over the shoulder, <laughs> uh, she, she blinks at me and she's like, oh, and that would be right out of my books. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, fun. Wow, how um, sweet. So I told her a little bit about our heart gardens. And oh. yeah, um, you know, these, these opportunities, it's like um, in, in the reading, I was told that I was supposed to be looking for allies. And, the, and that was from the, the guardian of fire. And so there was the guardian of water telling me to, uh, to listen and the guardian of fire telling me to share and create allies. And so I'm sitting there dancing in the fire, you know, by the fire. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, I felt very much in my reading. Uh, and so in the right place at the right time. And, um, and she lives in between me, where Joanne and I live, and the beach. So I walk by her place. And uh, so she is 55, and she is going to be um, having barbecues this summer. And now I don't have to worry about moving away. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm building a community in my community. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'll tell her about uh, the Butler Urban Heart Garden, and maybe we'll go down and, and garden together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the future holds, but um, 
Community is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. Well, I'm going to close a Gaia Zoom room for tonight. And Thanks. so I will um, just close the recording first and then you'll have, you and I can have some private moments together. Yeah. I'd just like to say thank you very much for tuning in and we shall see you again next week. Bye yes. for now. <laughs>